thank you the member for Thornhill thank you thank you mr. speaker I am truly honored to stand here today in this tribute to David Rottenberg the former progressive conservative representative of Wilson Heights David Rottenberg sometimes known as the ultimate underdog knew at six years old that politics was his passion he had a mind for names and politics, and he attended the University of Toronto, where he graduated with honors in political science and economics. By the time David was 28, uh, and only 28, he'd already made two uh, efforts to win a seat at Toronto City Council, and in 1960, he finally won that spot at City Hall, where his fashion-forward business suits would become a fixture. Uh, David had an instinctive nature, and he knew how to navigate through obstacles. David's, mo David's motto was, you have to know how to give in on the minor issues in order to win on the major ones. This was known as the Rottenberg style. David worked on city council and his work was immense. He served as the vice president of the Canadian National Exhibition, commissioner of the Toronto Transit Commission, and as the vice president of the Association of Municipalities. That's, that's a handful, uh, Mr. Speaker. I, I, I know this just after sitting uh, in this house for just such a short period. And although David's work ethic was strong, his passion for politics was only outweighed by his immense love for his family. Cecile, David's first wife, and his daughters, Mita and Hannah, were the loves of his life. When most city council members would commonly go out for dinner, I know the member across talked about that, David always makes sure he would go home, even in between meetings at council, and he always made sure he was home for uh, Shabbat uh, dinner. Uh, he spent more time uh, at home than you would expect with his busy schedule, but even with that, it was never enough. When he was asked to run federally, David responded that he'd run on the guarantee that he would lose. David wanted to make sure his girls knew he was home every night. Often he would jest that he didn't have the time to play much bridge. He loved bridge. We, we know that up there, don't we? And Or read sufficient light detective novels. But his dedication to his work and his family never wavered. David was constantly multitasking. And this is a mouthful. A Globe and Mail reporter once wrote, in his office, this was an incredible, exhausting scene. He was talking, holding and stacking phone calls, and at the same time he was leafing through a mountain of pink telephone slips. He had to answer that day, composing a long, detailed, fact-filled story just solicited by a newspaper for that, tonight, that night's edition, and simultaneously answering the reporter at the same time. All whilst having three department heads or lieutenants walking in with urgent business. He would keep all of this in a careful holding pattern until each matter could be dealt with. And like an air traffic controller, David navigated through all issues. In 1977, David was elected to the Ontario Legislature. He was an old school conservative and his goals were honest. He wasn't the type to finger point when things went wrong. David served as the parliamentary assistant to the Minister of Intergovernmental Affairs and parliamentary assistant to the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. And in 1985, he was appointed a minister without a, po a portfolio for urban affairs. David believed in the profession of a politician, always working constructively and collaboratively, serving under Premier Bill Davis, then under Premier Frank Miller. He worked well on both sides of the chamber, including a good working relationship with Bob Ray. He worked to get the best results for the people. And he was mindful of the funds being spent on projects, reminding his colleagues it was not the government's money, it was the public's money. After politics, David happily went back into the insurance business. David was always very social. Did I mention he loved bridge? David also sat on countless charity boards, and the member across mentioned a few of them. Extensively contributed his time and efforts to his community with many organizations, including the president of Armour Heights Lodge of Benebreth and as the director of Baycrest Center for Geriatric Care. Unfortunately, Cecile was taken early, and David became a widower far too soon. But David was given a second chance at love, and in 1996, he married Riva. I was told it was love at first sight, 
and as a stepfather and father, David was a tremendous support system to his children and a caring grandfather and a great grand grandfather to his ever-growing family. And it was growing, as you can see. <laughs> David fulfilled his dreams by retiring in Israel and continued to surround himself with more extended family. He would never miss a family event or a blessing involved with his synagogue. So David was a Cohen. And Mr. Speaker, this is a special lineage within Judaism, a leader, a guide. He felt strongly about his community and he was constantly helping others. So unfortunately, I did not know David personally. To gain access into David Rottenberg, the man, I interviewed family members who gave me the essence of David. And one of the things that we should appreciate was the progressive continuum that David felt he was a part of. The great Rabbi Tarfon said, it is not your responsibility to finish the work, but neither are you free to desist from it. These words depict David's dedication to the continuum. And David was supportive of the proactive work of this government and the constant common goals of good governance and a commitment to the community. David felt the public service was ever evolving and he was content knowing that he had passed the baton to the next generation. And I should add that the members from Eglinton Lawrence and York Center both feel this sentiment and they wanted to relay that as well. We are very proud to take that baton or that torch and run with it, Mr. Speaker. Today, we are fortunate to be surrounded by so many of David's family members, friends, colleagues in the house, his daughters, his nieces, nephews, grandchildren, former MPPs, and speakers of this chamber. It's a remarkable gathering that is quite redeeming and reflected in a life well loved and lived. I want to thank David's family for sharing with, with us him and, and for sharing him with the community and our province. May his memory always be a blessing. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well done.